Hey everybody, welcome to Bioenergetic Basics. This is episode number seven, and we're going to talk about where to start with Ray Pete's work. Lots of different opinions on this. I'm going to put my hat into the ring, and hopefully this is helpful for some people. This will not be a long one, but hopefully it will be a good way to direct people in finding Ray's work, what he's about, and hopefully guiding people away from resources that I think are not so great. And so yeah, let's get into it. First thing, the true method of knowledge is experiment. That's by Blake. So take everything here with a grain of salt and do your own research. And of course, in memory of Ray Pete here, raypeat.com. And then later we'll talk about a course that I made called Bioenergetic Basics. And then later we'll talk about Progesty from Kenogen, which Ray right here says it's the best progesterone product. What else do you want? <laughs> okay, so where to start with Ray Pete's work? I made a video about this a while ago, but I do want to talk about nutritional paradigms because there are presuppositions to all these different diets, whether people explicitly talk about them or not. So something like carnivore, it might be eat like your ancestors and it's very much diet first and then you second. It's not thinking about how you're necessarily functioning. It's more based on this idea of what cavemen eat <laughs> and then trying to mimic that to some extent in, in the modern world. And it, again, it's very much, this is the diet. And then you is like an ad hoc addition to that diet. And then veganism is even worse. Veganism is basically a religious cult of not doing harm to animals. It's animals first, and then you're a distant second. It's not even about you. <laughs> it's about animals. And I put this animals first in quotes because if any anybody dives into this argument, it's not even legitimate. So the difference between carnivore diet and vegan, I just put those two because they're the most popular right now. The bioenergetic stuff or the rate peat stuff, whatever you want to call it, your metabolic rate first, and then everything else is second. So your pulse rate, your temperature, which we'll talk about in a second, your metabolism is first, and then diet, supplementation, lifestyle, all that stuff is after your metabolism. So when somebody says, oh, you know, I tried that rate peat stuff, it doesn't work for me. Like, what exactly are you talking about? Did it not increase your rate of metabolism? There's so many different ways to do it. You could lay out in the sun and you could increase your rate of metabolism. It accounts for where the person came from, what their parents' health was like, what their grandparents' health was like, et cetera, et cetera. What happened to them when they exited the womb, what their mom ate. Do vegan and carnivore pack that all together to explain how the person is manifesting in the world? I don't think so. Those things are not included. I'm not saying that carnivore people or vegan people don't have something to say about those things, but the bioenergetic stuff invokes hysteresis or the history of the person and where they came from. And so all that stuff is really important. Here we go, straight from the story. Keeping the metabolic rate up is the main thing, and there are lots of ways to do it. So that was Ray in 2015. So is metabolism some ethereal thing that you can't really nail down? No, I don't think so. So what is metabolism? Metabolism is the aggregation of all cellular activity in the body. All energy production in the body is another way of saying that. And then we won't get too far into stress, but stress occurs when cellular energy cannot meet environmental demands. So energy metabolism and stress are like on a seesaw. So the higher the stress gets, the lower the metabolism gets, and vice versa. And this is a natural reaction to chronic stress, it's going to send signals to your entire metabolism to slow down so you can go longer on less. The whole goal is to keep the metabolic rate up and keep stress low. So that's the heart of everything that's being talked about in the metabolic sphere. So how can you measure the rate of metabolism? The easiest way to approach this is using the Broda Barnes basal metabolic rate test. And he had a person put the thermometer under their armpit and measure it upon waking. This is in his book, Hypothyroidism, the Unsuspected Illness. He thought the temperature shouldn't be under 97.8 or 36.6 upon waking. And then Ray added to that thinking that the temperature should rise to 37 degrees Celsius in the afternoon or 98.6. And that was a healthy rate of metabolism. There are some caveats here. It can be a little bit more nuanced, but that's the gist of it without going into this for 20 minutes. So what are some ways to increase the rate of metabolism? A stimulating life. I talked to lots of people that it's clear that they're working jobs or with girlfriends, boyfriends that they absolutely hate. Stuff like that will ruin your life. Uh, and it's not necessarily my place to say on a call to somebody like, oh yeah, you should get a divorce, but it's easier to start with the carrot salad. Striving to stimulate yourself in new ways, engage in novel activity. That's the goal, but it's not always the easiest thing to do on the planet. Light, sunlight, red light, sugar, calcium, meaningful work. This goes into a stimulating life. Good conversation. I can't tell you how many times I've had a really good conversation with somebody I felt really hot. Gelatin, salt, concentric exercise, bowel movements, thyroid hormone, aspirin, reducing EMF, caffeine, vitamin D, adventure, altitude, progesterone. Again, I'm just scratching the surface here. I'm just throwing out things. Further reading on this subject, I would suggest avoiding forums and groups as primary resources. Again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't go to these things. I'm saying as primary resources, but I would go read what Ray said. Somebody with experience, somebody who's read the primary literature, somebody with lots of wisdom. I'd go bounce something off something he had said and then go get Joe Schmo's opinion on some forum or something. But I think a lot of people are going to these forums or groups as primary resources, possibly because they don't understand, you know, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to enhance understanding. We're all here, presumably, because we want to learn more about the man, Ray Pete. You know, we want to learn what he was saying. We want to figure out whether it was right 
right or wrong. It's not some dogmatic thing like you need to defer to him. It's just if you want to learn what he was saying, try to get it from the source. This applies to anything I've ever done. Listen to Ray, what he had said, and check that with your own intuition, experience, etc. So what would be a primary resource? I would listen to Ray's audio interviews if you could not read his newsletters or his books. For myself, I got into his interviews and then I traversed over to his newsletters and then got into his books. So that was exactly what I did. And I thought it was way easier. And if I had an interview that I'd recommend, it's the Gary Knoll interview from 1996 and I'll link it below. But it's one of the best interviews. Gary doesn't interrupt Ray and Ray lays out the life story in the interview. We have the luxury of going through this guy's work and figuring out what he said about things. I'm not saying therefore you should accept it. I'm saying therefore you can check it on other points of views. But there are way too many people that I think are just getting secondhand information that is sometimes risky or dangerous. And so again, I think it's just a no brainer to try to reference the source rather than go into all these other sources and including me, you know, I'm not saying I'm above this, you know, so just too easy to do that these days with all the people into his stuff. That's all for this one. Uh, we're going to talk about bioenergetic basics real quick. This is a course that I made after uh, many years of talking to people. And let me clarify one thing. This is not like, what is thyroid? I mean, we get into that a little bit in this, but this is more about how to apply things like thyroid and digestive problems and nutrition, et cetera. And this is very much an application course and not so much like a who is right peak course. That stuff's been done. I made this course because it's how to apply things like what I'm always going over in calls over and over and over and over again. And so this is an hour and 10 minutes of just no fluff application. And I think it was cut down from two and a half hours. If you like the editing style of these bioenergetic basics, you'll probably like this as well. And then also, this is also brought to you by Progesty from Kenogen. We have a quote here from Ray. He says, I think it's the only good progesterone product. I would agree. And Kenogen at gmail.com. You can email Catherine directly. She sometimes gives people discounts for ordering a few bottles. So I think this is the best way to do it. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This was a quick one today. Have a great audience. Really appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.